SpaceX is intensely preparing for Starship's first orbital flight, and fuel itself is an indispensable part of any flight. With a flurry of deliveries, SpaceX has begun filling Starship's orbital class tank farm with thousands of tons of propellant. However, perhaps you don't know, besides propellant, water also plays an essential role in the rocket launch process. It might sound surprising to hear then that SpaceX has to use tens of tons of water per second to successfully launch a rocket. But why is so much water necessary? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Have you ever wondered why there are so many billowing clouds of water vapor appearing when launching a spacecraft? Actually, this phenomenon comes from two sources. The first one is the launch systems. The gigantic rocket that the spacecraft is attached to is commonly powered by a combination of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So, some of the vapor that you see during a launch is caused by the supercooled liquid fuel turning into gas when the overpressure is bled off just before launch. Along with water vapor forming as it condenses around the O2 and H2, the second primary source of water vapor comes from the launch pad itself via sound and fire suppression systems. Engineers foresaw that the sheer amount of acoustic energy generated by a launch would be enough to damage the sensitive, extremely expensive onboard electronic equipment. Afterward, they came up with a relatively cost-efficient solution, water. Right before a launch, massive amounts of water are ejected from a nearby tank to minimize this damage and prevent fires from starting on the launch pad. But what about Starship? How important is water during its launch? Licensing issues aside, the first orbital launch attempt of the full Starship and booster stack is still going to get a little toasty, and that's technically challenging. Because once all engines are ignited, that is going to be an unprecedented amount of force and heat. A Raptor engine spits out about 555 kilograms per second of exhaust gases, and with the future Raptor 2 topping that at around 685 kilograms per second. Furthermore, the exhaust will leave the nozzle at a speed of around 3.3 kilometers per second. It's also scorching hot, with temperatures hovering over 1400 degrees Celsius. With a nozzle diameter of around 1.3 meters, a single Raptor engine releases about 4400 cubic meters of burning hot gas every second. Future boosters will be crammed with 33 Raptor 2 engines. Isn't that a significant amount of energy? We know that one ton of methane contains around 56 gigajoules of chemical energy. By that benchmark, starting with the initial 29 Raptor 1 engines planned for B4, or Booster 4, a total mass flow of 16 tons per second is predicted, of which 3.6 tons is methane, and that's nearly 200 gigawatts of energy released. In a modern nuclear power plant, a single block produces around... 1.3 gigawatts of electricity, give or take, and requires about 4 gigawatts of heat to do so. So, when a super heavy is turned on, it generates enough heat to run 50 nuclear reactors at the same time. They'll burn through 5 tons of methane every second until they're outfitted with 33 Raptor 2s, totaling 280 gigawatts. Can you just imagine how powerful that must be? That's enough energy to melt steel and demolish concrete in a matter of milliseconds. That's why the water deluge system is so important, and water is an excellent heat absorber. Now, what's the required amount of water for each Starship launch? To raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, takes a little over 4 kilojoules, and in order to evaporate water, it requires up to 2.3 megajoules per kilogram. To keep the temperature under control and prevent damage to the orbital launch pad, 
We'd need about 80 tons of water every second on average. However, keep in mind that the exhaust gas dispersing into the surrounding area carries away a lot of the heat, and roughly half of the energy is stored in the motion of the gas. So the capability of sound suppression is another important responsibility for that system. If the sound is higher than 180 decibels, the unsuppressed noise of launches becomes absurdly loud to the point of being deadly and destructive to nearby objects. As a frame of reference, a quiet home emits about 40 decibels of noise. Amplified rock and roll music is about 120 decibels at 100 feet. And a jet plane gives off 130 decibels at 100 feet. When a pad is properly saturated, the noise level drops to roughly 140 decibels. And that's still quite loud enough, even louder than a metal concert. To be able to hold a huge amount of water for each launch, SpaceX has built water tanks 9 meters wide and around 30 meters tall. Hopefully, it will contain enough water to sustain the upcoming dense launches. How about other rockets? Specifically, let's talk about the SLS, the largest, most powerful rocket NASA has ever built. It might sound surprising then to hear that NASA has to use approximately half a million gallons of water in just 60 seconds to successfully launch a rocket. NASA even created the massive fountain as part of a test for its flagship rocket. Standing upright, the SLS will reach 322 feet in height, 17 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty, and weigh almost 6 million pounds. When it lifts off, its engines will generate 8.5 4 million pounds of force and sound waves so powerful that they could easily destroy the rocket from the ground up. NASA will project the water onto and over the launch pad during ignition and liftoff. This not only protects the ground from the rocket's engines, it also prevents the sound waves from bouncing off the ground and back up which could cause catastrophic damage to the engines. The system also prevents the giant flames generated by the engines from catching anything on fire. During an actual launch, some of the water will evaporate due to the extreme heat, while the rest exits through nozzles. Pretty impressive, right? Each drop of water is essential for a launch's success. Launches need as much water as possible since a large amount of it evaporates instantly under the extreme heat of a rocket's jets. However, water is not an infinite resource. According to experts, we might be running out of it in the coming years. So how can space companies and agencies maintain the required amount of water for each launch? The answer to that question is quite complex. We will respond to you as soon as we have the most accurate information. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Another way you can show us how much you love us is by giving us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribing if you haven't already, and hitting the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. Be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. <laughs>